Hello! Not long ago, I made this frame up and said I wanted to get some stuff to put in it so I could put in an open IPC camera and VTX because it's a nice long frame and you can put things in. I haven't had great success in getting a huge amount of the components for I wanted, so I'm going to get most of them from a quad I don't fly anymore. I think I've taken some stuff out of it so it can't fly. But I have got a product I want to put in there and this is from Radiolink. It's called the F722 board. One of the reasons I looked at this one and thought this looks interesting is because, if I remember correctly, you can turn on and off the 9 or 10 volt back which would supply your digital FPV. And I think we all know that digital, whatever you're using, gets pretty damn hot pretty quickly. And if you're sat there waiting for a GPS lock, you notice I've got a space for a GPS there, it can get boiling. So I thought that's really handy. We get the quad on the floor, we turn it on, we wait for a GPS lock and then we turn on the HD camera and we can take off. So let's get this out of the box, see what it's all about and then I'm going to make the rest of this quad up, plug this into it and uh, see if we can take it for a fly. Well I don't expect an awful lot in the box for a flight controller but let's see exactly what's in here. So here's the main flight controller, here's a lot of cables for it and an actual fully printed user manual which is quite cool. What I do appreciate about this board is you've got a lot of pads. Now, generally I don't like two layers of pads because it's a little bit harder to get the inside layer in terms of soldering, but these are nice and big. And we've also got pretty much connectors all the way around, which I presume is gonna sort that out for me. So yeah, I'll be having a look through the manual, uh, seeing what I can do to set this up and uh, yeah, get building this guy up. As said, I'll be using motors and an ESC board from another quad that I tend not to fly these days and I've got a few spare GPSs to use and then I'll be sticking in one of the open IPC VTXs and the one that's closest to me is this brand new Wi-Fi Link V2 from Runcam which looks really nice. But before we get on with the build, a quick word from our sponsor which is PCBWay. PCBWay can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you are probably well aware of them. Now, I don't know much about PCB design, but with open source hardware becoming more popular, they'll give out Gerber files, which is all you need to get your PCBs made. In fact, if you go to the shared project section on PCBWay.com, you'll be able to see lots of open source projects that you could get PCBWay to make for you. But it's not just PCBs, CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do, and in materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to look at having them make something for you, check them out at PCBWay.com. I think this one's going to be the donor quad, as I've already pinched the FPV camera and it's on an old free sky thing. Just a question is if those motor wires will stretch and fit on that one else it'd be a bit of a pain to lengthen them and stuff but uh, it's quite easy because I can just take the lot out and move it across without unsoldering anything so let's try it. Okay so this is the way the ESC should go around with the side XT60 container. So using that these are about three mil too short and these are way short so what i intend to do is turn it round like that so we have motors that fit on those ones i'll have to extend these to a bit and i'll extend this xt60 so it comes around here and then i'll obviously have to reorder those motors but i think that's the best choice out of what we've got here okay motor wires lengthened such a pain when they're about this short and you have to go through all the hassle of desoldering and resoldering uh next is getting my esc uh, in place. This is the old board and fortunately has it kind of written there saying it seems to be battery current ground and ESC1234. Radio Link can take uh, up to eight motors so it's got room for two ESCs. It's a different order and they also have telemetry which means it's got an extra pin so I could plug this one in and move it over but I think it's probably much safer to get one of their cables that they had and just move the pins from here to here that way I can't accidentally plug it in wrong. So before plugging it in I did make sure that the voltage was coming through where I expected it to and that looked good. So I've got it up on beta flight, uh, just calibrated it. You'll see it includes a barometer and what I went into is the motors, where are we there? And uh, I went ahead and used both the reorder motors and the motor direction and uh, this is pretty good now so everything is moving in the right way. 
it's number one, two, three, and four. So that's all good. So that is the, the big way of getting the ESC sorted out. So what I'm going to do is start joining up other things to all these ports, like uh, getting my open IPC VTX installed, getting the receiver in, getting the GPS in, and well, that should be about it then, shouldn't it? Battery-wise, I'm not sure. I might still go with the idea of getting this up on the side like that instead of going out the back. I'm, I'm going to check what it's like, and if I don't like it, I can solder a bigger lead there and, and come round and, and through as per normal. We are ready for solder number two. So I was going to hand it by the side, but I did find I had this one already made up and it will just be about the right length just to poke out here, so I'm going to put that on. I've got the cables I need ready on the flight controller. It had most of the cables, but they were pinned up in a sort of weird way, so I had to do a bit of repinning and stuff. But I've got myself, I thought I'd put a, a capacitor on along with the XC60. I've got this Rush FPV M10, which is just this much short to go on there and go into that, so I have to extend that, which is annoying. We've got the receiver here, that's ready to go into that bit, I think. This is for the uh, HD VTX, and I've got the Runcam V2 ready to hook up. Um, yeah, and then it should be done, and we can power it up and see what happens, so let's get soldering. Okay, done the XT60. Done all the stupid amount of joins and link thing I need to there, so it's a case of let's see if this goes together. Not sure if that one is going to sit comfortably with that on top of it, but we'll have a try. We can always move it. Okay, it's all in. There's a few bits, like, yeah, I'm not so keen on, like, these wires, and that sort of has to push on that a bit, but I think that should be okay, uh, because, you know, there's a big fan, and it's very hard to get that round. The longest time took to put the camera in, because it didn't come with the screws I needed or a mount I needed. And I couldn't find a mount like this one. I ended up quickly chucking one on Fusion 360. Basically, it's just a TPU box with a hole cut in it, and then a very specific screw, which was an M2 by 8 just to have it right, so it could screw all the way in and be tight there. So I went up on B to Flight, and I've done all my uh, bits there, like uh, arming and angle horizon. The big uh, one, if you're wondering, is this one here, user one, which I'm using this momentary switch to turn on and off. Um, if you don't know how to do that on a momentary switch, I'll explain. But first, let me tell you what user one does, because unfortunately, the otherwise excellent manual doesn't tell you about it. But it's a way, as I mentioned, we can turn this VTX on and off. So if I just plug this in now, okay, you'll notice very obviously that the uh, the fan's going. So if I now turn this button, SH1, press that, turns off again. You can see this fan stop, and if I press it back, it turns back on. So that is a way I intend to save my VTX from overheating. So very quickly, I've got VTX on channel 11, which is a logical switch. So from the point of view of the mix there, it'll look absolutely normal, it'll just say, it's LO1. So in order to make LO1, we use something called the sticky. I think sticky switch is what they call it. So if we go to uh, LO1 here and we edit it, what I've done, I've got the function is sticky and V1 and V2 are both SH down. And that means when you press it, it becomes sticky and then it stays like that until you press it again. If we go somewhere like this and press in, take the finger off to see how it stays there. And I've actually got the same thing on this momentary button here for uh, total mode. The only thing I did on a momentary switch is this one, which is my beeper, which I want to actually be a momentary switch. So there's that bit. Not quite ready to go. Aside from not putting the top on yet, these are stupidly long. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with these. I can't have them flapping around else they get caught. I think what I'll probably do is get some cable ties um, and some heat shrink and heat shrink those in probably in a V like that but let's let's put the top on and we'll see what happens and if you're wondering what I'm on about about using cable ties and heat shrink basically we get a cable tie we put it in we then put the heat shrink over the antenna and the cable tie uh, shrink it and at that point it becomes quite sort of pliable and then you get it in the position you want and as it 
cools down, it will stay there. Unfortunately, I only had this red stuff, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'm going to try one of the default tunes on Betaflight, full slope with action camera. So we haven't got RPM filtering. We do have ELRS. I suppose we want a smooth medium in terms of rates. And then I can mess around and get those bits right. Only works in D-Shot. Yep, okay. So we're running D-Shot 600 as it is. Try that. So here's our finished build. Got better props on these uh, NASCAR props. Only problem I had is the motor uh, spacing of the screws is not a square, so only two screws would fit in. So they have been loctited in, so hopefully they won't disappear. Uh, but as for the rest of it, let's go and fly it and see what happens. Well, hello, it's a gorgeous day in the field, albeit windy, no matter what it does, it's always windy here because by the sea, and I'm trying to block the wind, which is going that way, so it doesn't just sound like, shh. So we've got the quad with the Radiolink F7 board in it. There's a lot of new bits on this. This is the first time flying, aside from a quick hover in the garden, the flight controller, the frame, uh, the Wi-Fi Link 2, uh, yeah, every every single bit on it has not really been tested, so it'll be interesting to see. But this is mainly going to deal with like how it feels, because we basically put the board on, we gave it like a, a stock recommended settings, and we'll see what happens from there. Right, so here we go for the maiden flight. Now, some of you guys may have seen this because this was me also reviewing the Runcam VRX. I used some of this footage for it. But on this one, I wanted to talk specifically about the flight controller. Some things I had a bit of an issue with and some things looked pretty good. So I'd actually left it on the ground for about five or six minutes to gain satellites. What I did, I, as mentioned, is I turned the VTX off while that was happening. I just used the telemetry on my radio to see it. And it didn't seem like it was going to go past seven. So I thought, oh, let's just fly it and see what happens. So very obvious things as well on my display here. You see, I've got the uh, DBM RSSI flashing away. So I haven't set the alarms for that properly. Really, the alarm should kick in at about minus 100. Up to this point, it's fine. And as you see, we're on 10 milliwatts of power at the moment. So that can, that can ramp right up should it need to. But everything so far on the quad seems to be working nicely. The The main thing is we've got a fairly smooth quad. Going this direction is better because the wind's behind us. When we turn around, sometimes we get the odd wobble because it's, it's fairly strong wind and the quad is basically having some little wobbles when it's uh, going hard into the wind. But we've got like the home arrow working and everything seems to be basically working nicely and it seems to be flying all right so that's pretty good so let's jump over to battery number two flight number two i didn't actually start recording till three minutes 39 which is a bit of a mistake but what i wanted to test here is rescue mode my tip for rescue mode the first time is to find a place where it's very obvious where you are just in case it goes down i'm using that post at the end of the field which is a, a very easy spot sort of thing rescue mode appears to be working okay it's going up very high because it's basically 20 meters above my last maximum height and i'd done some flying up to about 50 meters earlier in the battery rescue mode a little bit wobbly but basically seems to be coming back you can see the meters coming down so i'm pretty happy with that uh, i'd actually done another test before i started recording just in the corner of the field just to make sure it didn't instantly drop you might have seen just a bit of blackness on the screen just when we were about to do that rescue mode that is what happens when open ipc sort of judders and loses its picture it doesn't lose its picture it kind of freezes for me but the dvr basically just blanks it so i started doing uh just just really range checks on things like open ipc and and checking it could handle you know going behind the odd tree and stuff which it mostly does you just see the odd flicker of black going in there okay flight control seems to do quite well so let's put a gopro on it which is pretty typical let's see how it works yeah, so I wanted to see how the quad would handle a GoPro. This is a GoPro 7 I'm using because I find my 10 so hateful and the 7 still works nicely. Um, obviously, lots of people like to put GoPros on and film with it because, you know, it makes your footage looks good and you've got something to show people. So, you know, this is going at, uh, I think, 2K60, something like that. And one of the reasons I want to do it is I had another flight here on a different quad and I saw these deer at the end of the field and they seemed very chill. They weren't too worried about the quad coming close to them. So I thought, oh, let's put the GoPro on. Let's see if I can capture any of it nicely with the GoPro. Of course, the GoPro is quite wide angle, so you, know, you don't see anything too close. 
and there is if you look on the right hand mid of the screen you can see a bit of a smudge there it turned out I had a bit of grass stuck to my ND filter with sort of dampness and stuff and I hadn't noticed till afterwards but yeah the deer are reasonably chill they're reasonably okay with me flying close to this one's like don't know about this I'm gonna go back to my friends but uh, yeah generally speaking they weren't too bothered. I should explain that when it goes black like that, it's not a complete wipeout of the picture mostly. It's like a, a judder. So I'm not completely losing it for a second. I'm just losing some of the image. But let's leave the deer alone now because we've hassled them enough, but always nice to see a uh, decent wildlife in the field. I should explain, I've left the little OSD display in the corner there so you can see exactly how much stabilization the GoPro is giving. Really, it's just taking my little inputs and smoothing those out so I look like I'm a better pilot, which I appreciate. But it's not doing uh, a whole lot more. Always got to go up high just to make sure, see if you get any judder here from the wind because it's much stronger up high. Now, I did notice that the GoPro was a much wider field of view than the camera, which I kind of guess I'm used to, but I did notice the camera was a little bit narrow. Nothing to do with the flight control, of course but it really knocked me off balance when I was trying to do things like split S's. I eventually got the hang of them. It's kind of more about doing it sort of nice and slow and just rolling over, sort of the cruisy way of doing it. But I will try running this camera at 1080 because I noticed on another open IPC camera that 720 and 1080, the 1080 gives a wider field of view. So I'll check that out. But for the most point of view, I was really just cruising along low and fast. That's what I really like to do. And this quad performed really nicely at doing that. So I'm really pleased with the overall build. The other good thing, which you may have noticed, is as I went through the batteries, my GPS count went up and up. It didn't get beyond 12, but on a quad, I find that's fairly normal. So a good afternoon's flying. Well, that was an absolute pleasure to fly. I'm really quite happy because I haven't done a build from scratch for such a long time. And I'm always worried about how it's going to fly, but this went really well. So we have to thank in large parts to this Radio Link F722 flight controller. Uh, I did like several features about it. the fact you could put eight motors into it, very handy, two uh, four in one ear seaboards, it would take that. Uh, and the fact it had that user one thing to control the back to the OpenHD system, really useful because those digital systems absolutely fry themselves if left there. So that was really nice. Seemed to work pretty smoothly and we just used one of the general five inch profiles and we didn't even have like RPM filtering because these motors and ESC board are old. So the Radiolink board was new as was the frame, as was the Runcam Wi-Fi 2 open IPC system. The rest of it, bits of spares I had lying around. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Obviously I'm back to tune up some of the stuff on OpenIPC, see if I can get it handling better, but the rest of it, really nice. So a, a bunch of products, are, I'll list them down below if you want to have a look and, and maybe get something similar. Anyway, hope that review's been helpful. I will catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.